He who ascended up, rahmatul he cursed the ana. He cursed all four. And he said they're all equally guilty. The one who takes riba, the one who gives riba, the one who records the transaction, and the two witnesses. If you have the curse of a prophet upon you, how can you expect help from Allah? The first kind of riba mentioned in the Quran is, of course, money being lent or borrowed on interest. That's easily understood by everybody. And why has Allah prohibited it? He gives us two lessons. Number one, in Surah to Rum, He says that what you invest in a riba transaction, that your capital sum might increase, might multiply at the expense of the wealth of others, will not multiply with Allah because He disapproved of it. But what you put out or you invest in charity, seeking Allah's pleasure, or oh, that will multiply many times. And so we have a contrast. The contrast is between riba and charity. What is the lesson being, le being sent? So Allah says, He gives us a contrast between riba and charity. And you have to think. That's what you have to do. You have to think that it, a perfect act of charity is one in which you give and you take nothing in return. And Allah is saying that riba is the opposite to that. You may not yourself recognize it, but the money lender has an agenda. And his hidden agenda is to take all of your wealth and give you nothing in return. And so eventually, Africa is miserably poor. And Pakistan and Bangladesh and Algeria and Morocco and Tunisia and Indonesia are miserably poor. I know because I travel to these places. 